My name is Thomas Madrigal. I reside at 13427 Mozart. Yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor, and City Council members, for letting me say a few words here. Uh, Saturday, I was uh, privileged to attend a benefit basketball game at uh, St. Benedict's uh, Police Department and Fire Department. And it's, it's nice to have these police officers, officers, uh, police officers uh, firemen do that because at drop of a dime, these guys are, could be in harm's way. And that's, it's nice to see that situation. A lot of times they're out there, you know, as far as responding to calls, stuff like that. So it was, it was a nice outing for a change. And uh, as you people know, I'm very patriotic American. Uh, I'm a, you know, my parents are Mexican, but I'm first American. And I remember when I was, went to the military, you know, when I was a Boy Scout here in town, I took an oath to defend uh, the U.S. Constitution from foreign domestic enemies. And I do, like I said, I, I'm not in politics, people. I don't, I don't believe in politics, what's best for the city. And that flag there was straight on 10 of my friends I served with Vietnam. And that's, you know, that's that's a lot. And uh, like I said, I just, I just like to mention, I get <coughs> different tangents or something. Uh, what was the last month I was at Bob's Auto there on Vincent Avenue. Uh, my wife's had a small fender bed and she came to car repair. And I noticed a lot of fast traffic's going on that been since. Must put people going 20 miles, 30 miles over speed, just And yeah, that's a, you know, that's uh, that's dangerous. Is there a police uh, police department? Do they patrol that area there? In fact, if you've driven on Vincent earlier this morning, you have a speed traffic machine here. Okay, because okay. I just even on Western Avenue, they just come down to call for us. And I'm just I'm concerned for the you know citizens and, and children. So thank you very much for listening to me today. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Carol DePace Green, 2731 Orchard Street, Blue Island. We are aware there are aldermen who have not been updated regarding the Jawa lawsuits. Our Blue Island Java representative has not kept the City Council or citizens up to date. We've been informing the City Council about all of the Java lawsuits. We feel all of the aldermen need to be fully informed and updated regarding the current circuit court judgment of nearly eight million dollars, along with Postal's appellate court uh, appeal. It is in the best interest of the community that all of the city council go into executive session so that all the aldermen can be knowledgeable about the seriousness of this nearly $8 million judgment. It appears to those of us who have worked on the Jawa problem for years that the administration and city council are not communicating well because of the political fractionalism that can cause terrible harm to our community, and in this case, because of the $8 million judgment. We strongly suggest that you go into executive session so every alderman can understand the magnitude of what's going on. We know that Jawa is defunct. However, was Jawa formally dissolved or signed off on by any of the communities before postal initiated his lawsuit. We would like to see written evidence of a complete legal dissolution of the Jawa. In the Jawa meetings, Mike Stillman, the attorney, made it very clear, he's with Olson and Stark, that the Jawa could not be dissolved as long as there was any outstanding debt or pending litigation. We don't know what the underwriters did with the money that was left in the Jawa when they took over. We don't know the details of what happened with the initial investment, along with the attorney fees that have certainly already been wasted. We do know that our Blue Island aldermen should be advocating for their constituents, Blue Island taxpayers, and the public, and that has not happened at all. It, how does the average citizen participate in the appellate court hearings? And what is happening 
with the appellate court hearing at this point. We know that the attorneys for the communities submitted a brief to the appellate court on April 13th, according to the limited information that we have. Is there going to be a hearing for that that the public can participate in? Can I comment on any litigation? Okay. Because, you know, one of the possible alternatives would be, you know, for the citizens to be able to participate or file a Friends of the Court brief, possibly. Again, this is a lot of money that we're talking I about. I understand. And of course, some of you may be aware Robbins, a participant in the JAWA, is $13 million in debt to Chicago for water. We know that we have JAWA bills that we have to pay uh, for the loans for the JAWA for our portion of the initial several million dollars that, was, that we sold bonds for. And we're going to be paying for that for the next 20 years? It's all, is it already paid off? We're out of it. I, I, I know you're saying that we're out of it, but we're not out of it. I'm sure that we're still paying on those bonds. We're out of it. <clears throat> Anything else? I don't think we're out of it, Mayor. Not if we're filing an appellate court brief. We can't be out of it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Now, move on. I am set to report on early Sunday morning. I received a text that former Alderman uh, DeSado has passed away. Uh, he was living in Arkansas, the last, the last that I know of. Uh, he would always send us, and I think the Alderman kind of vouched for this, he'd always send us Christmas cards. If it wasn't a Christmas card, we would get a phone call from him personally, no matter what time. However he is feeling, you always make sure to get in contact with all of us, or the ones that are close to him. Uh, I have the honor, as an alderman, to be serving alongside him. And from my understanding, he also served as treasurer, or no? Yeah. We'll let, we'll let uh, yeah. Carmine, if you know a little bit more. Yes. Uh, I, I know that basically he was an alderman from 1960, somewhere in there. Until 2005. 2005. Oh. He was also mayor pro tem for a special election for a year and a half until the special election took place. That was with Mr. Harzak. Uh, it was his first term as mayor for about a year and a half, two years. Then he, he stepped down and resigned because of personal conflicts. And then there was a special between uh, automatic, the process uh, takes place to choosing a temporary mayor. So he was temporary mayor for about a year, year and a half until a special election. And then the uh, special election was held in 77, if I recall. And that's where Mayor Rita came in to finish the term. And uh, he, either he went, he, he, stepped, he stepped down, and then he came back and we ran again for Alderman. So there was a time that possibly he might have been treasurer temporarily, I'm not sure. But, but he has a long legacy. 40 years. Mm -hmm. Long mm -hmm. legacy in the city of Hawaii, and we uh, acknowledge that. That's why you see the bond team up in front of City Hall. Uh, a great man, a great servant of his community. Uh, he will be deeply remiss, but as we say, the cliche, he will never be forgotten. Um, we've been trying to get information from anyone, family or friends, and we not, have not been successful. Uh, but if any of you know any information, please let us know. Yeah. Is it Saturday? Saturday, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 1030 to 1130 St. George Church in, in Timmy Park. Okay. So we got that. All right. So we, got that. we have that information. So I would encourage all of us, whoever can attend, please attend on behalf of the city and on behalf of the community. Um, I also have some other information. Um, there will be a dedication to ribbon cutting ceremony again for boot camp. There's an open house and fundraiser. This is on April 28, 2018, from 2 to 3 p.m. Um, that's at boot camp. And then the open house and fundraiser says at Jen Mansfield's home, 12134 Greenwood Avenue, Blue Island, Illinois, again on the same date, the 
that's the open house and fundraisers from 3 to 8 p.m. I'll have this up here if whoever wants to get more information regarding that. Uh, I did receive correspondence uh, from the American Legion Post 50. They want to have permission to attend to hold the annual, annual operation honor event in Memorial Park. Uh, again, it's gratitude to all veterans, respect, uh, and current military service members. That will be held at Memorial Park at 128 4th Highland. And the date is the first Saturday of August. Uh, and the date is the 25th of August, 2018, between the hours of 12 p.m. and 11 p.m. <coughs> Again, I'll bring this back to the council for approval, etc. cetera. Um, another thing, and this I mentioned last time, about that nail polish for the ladies. Uh, I've seen that some of the ladies have already started uh, showing their colors for the city. If the ones who don't know, uh, OPI, I think is the name of the company. OPI. And then there's another one called D something. Uh, it came to my attention that they have a nail polish called Blue Island, Illinois. It's a blue, it's not a dark blue, it's a light blue. And the local salons here, nail salons, do have it. And we're going to try to get to see if we have all the ladies uh, show their city colors in private in the city. That's something promotional. Again, corporate America. Why do you pick Blue Island? Well, I know why, because we're great. Okay? But of all the cities, it's called Blue Island, Illinois. That's the name of the product. Or Blue Island Blue. Each company has its own name. So that's uh, city clerk's business. Yes, I have five requests this evening, Your Honor. The first one is a motion to approve a request from Marisol Chavez to have a block party on 120th in Washington on May 5th from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. I have a motion by Alderman Askelin. Do I have a second by Alderman Pittman? Any questions? Roll call, please. Okay. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Pittman. Aye. Pittman, aye. Slattery. Aye. Slattery, aye. Poulos. Aye. Kulos, aye. Frosto. Aye. Frosto, aye. Bellato. Aye. Bellato, aye. Vieta. Aye. Vieta, aye. Pauly. Aye. Pauly, aye. Fernwald. Aye. Fernwald, aye. Austin. Aye. Austin, aye. Ten eyes, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Next, I need a motion to approve a request from the Salvation Army for their annual donuts day on uh, Friday and Saturday, June 1st and 2nd, 2018, in their Red Kettle campaign on, from Monday to Saturday, November 1st to December 24th, 2018. Do have a motion? By Alderman Pauly, do I have a second? By Alderman Poulos, any questions? No call. Okay. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Pittman. Aye. Pittman, aye. Slattery. Aye. Slattery, aye. Poulos. Aye. Poulos, aye. Frosto. Aye. Frosto, aye. Bellato. Aye. Bellato, aye. Vieta. Aye. Vieta, aye. Holly. Aye. Holly, aye. Fernwald. Aye. Fernwald, aye. Aslan. Aye. Aslan, aye. Ten eyes. Next, I need a motion to approve a request for Maple Tree and to have their annual NOLA Fest on Sunday, July 18th from 12 noon until 9 p.m. Okay, motion by Alvin Bellato, second by Alvin Aslan. Any questions? Roll we'll call, please. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Pittman. Aye. Pittman, aye. Slattery. Aye. Slattery, aye. Poulos. Aye. Poulos, aye. Frosto. Aye. Frosto, aye. Bellato. Aye. Bellato, aye. Vieta. Aye. Vieta, aye. Holly. Aye. Holly, aye. Fernwald. Aye. Fernwald, aye. Osling. Aye. Osling, aye. Ten eyes, Your Honor. Thank you much. <coughs> and next, we need a motion to approve a request from St. John's Catholic Church to hold their 109th annual feast and carnival starting on Wednesday, August 1st through Sunday, August 5th. Feast day mass will be held at 10 a.m. On, on Sunday, August 5th. Motion on Bellato. And a second. By Alvin Pippen. Any questions? Roll call, please. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Pittman. Aye. Pittman, aye. Slattery. Aye. Slattery, aye. Poulos. Aye. Poulos, aye. Frosto. Aye. Frosto, aye. Bellato. Aye. Bellato, aye. Vieta. Aye. Vieta, aye. Holly. Aye. Holly, aye. Fernwell. Aye. Fernwell, aye. Osling. Aye. Osling, aye. Ten eyes. Thank you. And lastly, a motion to approve a request from the Muscular District. Association for Blue Island Firefighters to hold the Fill the Boot Tag Day on May 25th and June 22nd and July 20th, 2018. Thank you very much. Do we have a motion by Alvin Vieira, second by Alvin Pauly. Any questions? <coughs> Carr. Aye. 
Carr, aye. Pittman, aye. Pittman, aye. Slattery, aye. Slattery, aye. Poulos, aye. Poulos, aye. Frausto, aye. Frausto, aye. Bellato, aye. Bellato, aye. Vieta, aye. Vieta, aye. Holly, aye. Holly, aye. Farnwell, aye. Farnwell, aye. Hosling, aye. Hosling, aye. Ten eyes, right? Thank you. Any bids, city clerk? No bids this evening, right? City clerk. Thank you, Your Honor. All the elements for the season of the packet, the transition from restricted funds to non restricted funds, a total of six hundred six thousand nine twenty three oh four. And the motion, not yet. The motion, yeah. The motion by Alderman Austin, second by Alderman Carr. Any questions? Alderman? Um, Treasurer Bellotto, on here it shows, uh, I just wanted to clarify this. A transfer is that a transfer from the golf course of thirty-seven thousand? Taken from the golf course, yes. Okay, Thomas. Under yeah, approval of interfund transfers. Those are these are all for accounts payable. These this sheet here is all the money that's been transferred to pay accounts payable. Okay, but this. What I'm saying is this money was transferred from the golf course. From the golf course to the general fund. Okay, so that would be a profit from the golf course? Yeah. There's, there's what now? It's profit? Well, there's money that the golf course uh, collected, correct? There's money that has been transferred to pay the expenses. From the golf course? From the golf course. Okay. From the revenue, correct? Got a motion? Do we have a second? The second button. Do we have a second? I think All in the map? Uh, Blau. Any questions? <laughs> and then we'll call. Okay. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Pittman. Aye. Pittman, aye. Slattery. Aye. Slattery, aye. Poulos. Aye. Poulos, aye. Frosto. Aye. Frosto, aye. Bellato. Aye. Bellato, aye. Vieta. Aye. Vieta, aye. Holly. Aye. Holly, aye. Farnwells. Aye. Bramble, aye. Osling, aye. Osling, aye. Ten eyes. Thank you. One other thing, uh, point back to Mr. Disobedo's situation. Here I would ask if it's all possible um, that the city, I don't know the proper terminology would be, you know, this resolution, <coughs> some sort of paperwork that can be given to the family for the 40 year uh, service that you have. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Nothing? Uh, City Attorney. Mr. Mayor, there are a number of items on the agenda. The first is an ordinance approving the Platic <coughs> subdivision concerning 2330 Borough Avenue, Lyle, Illinois. Any motion? Any motion? Any questions? Any questions? Go ahead. I just wanted to clarify for people who might be watching. This is the plot of land next to the Parkins gas station on 127th Street? Yes. But it's not there. Correct. Okay. Uh, roll call, please. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Pittman. Aye. Pittman, aye. Slattery. Aye. Slattery, aye. Poulos. Aye. Poulos, aye. Frosto. Aye. Frosto, aye. Bellato. Aye. Bellato, aye. Vieta. Aye. Vieta, aye. Holly. Aye. Holly, aye. Farnwell. Aye. Farnwell, aye. Osling. Aye. Osling, aye. Ten eyes, Your Honor. Thank you. The next is an ordinance approving and authorizing the execution of the First Amendment to intergovernmental agreement between the Forest Preserve District of Cook County and Blue Island, Illinois, for CalSag Trail East segment. In brief, this amends the intergovernmental agreement to set forth the ownership and maintenance requirements with respect to the bridge that will connect uh, Phase Point to, I believe it is the Joe Lewis Golf Course. Okay. Any motion? Alderman Nero, second Alderman Blatto. Any questions? Roll call. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Pittman. Aye. Pittman, aye. Slattery. Aye. Slattery, aye. Poulos. Aye. Poulos, aye. Frosto. Aye. Frosto, aye. Bellato. Aye. Bellato, aye. Vieta. Aye. Vieta, aye. Holly. Aye. Holly, aye. Farrell. Aye. Farrell, aye. Osling. Thank you. The next is ord an ordinance amending Title 11, Business Regulations, <coughs> Chapter 111, Alcoholic Liquor of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Blue Island, Cook County, Illinois, to establish record review. This adds a provision to the 
current liquor control ordinance that provides that if there is a review of any decision of the local liquor control commissioner with respect to a suspension or revocation, that the official record made before the liquor control commissioner at the hearing will be reviewed by the Illinois Liquor Control Commission in lieu of a, another full and complete hearing and trial. Motion by Alderman Lamato, second by Alderman Deering. Any questions? Roll call. Carr. Aye. Carr. Aye. Pittman. Aye. Pittman. Aye. Slattery. Aye. Slattery. Aye. Poulos. Aye. Poulos. Aye. Frosto. Aye. Frosto. Aye. Mulatto. Aye. Mulatto. Aye. Vieta. Aye. Vieta. Aye. Holly. Aye. Holly. Aye. Fairwall. Aye. Fairwall. Aye. Hostling. Aye. Hostling. Aye. Ten eyes. Thank you. Next is an ordinance restricting a portion of a certain street at or near 2819 Minnesota Avenue for handicapped parking only within the city of Allen, County of Cook, State of Illinois, and provided penalties for the violation thereof. We have a motion. Bob Lucar, second by Alderman Pittman. Any questions? Roll call, please. Carr. Aye. Carr. Aye. Pittman. Aye. Pittman. Aye. Slattery. Aye. Slattery. Aye. Poulos. Aye. Poulos. Aye. Frausto. Aye. Frausto. Aye. Bellotto. Aye. Bellotto. Aye. Vieta. Aye. Vieta. Aye. Holly. Aye. Holly. Aye. Fairwell. Aye. Fairwell. Aye. Osling. Aye. Osling. Aye. Ten eyes. Thank you. The next is a resolution of the City of Blue Island, Cook County, Illinois, supporting the Class 8 Real Estate Tax Assessment Classification for 13611 Thornton Road, GK Real Estate Group, Inc. We have a motion. Alderman Osling, second Alderman uh, Frosto. Any questions? This is the old Robertson transfer. <laughs> yes. Okay. Any other questions? Roll call, please. Carr. Aye. Carr. Aye. Pittman. Aye. Pittman. Aye. Slattery. Aye. Slattery. Aye. Poulos. Aye. Poulos. Aye. Frosto. Aye. Frosto. Aye. Bellotto. Aye. Bellotto. Aye. Vieta. Aye. Vieta. Aye. Holly. Aye. Holly. Aye. Fairwell. Aye. Fairwell. Aye. Osling. Hustling eye, ten eyes, you Thank you. The next item is a resolution authorizing an insurance contract with AIX Specialty Insurance Company for commercial general liability insurance for the city of Blau. This is for insurance for the three metro parking lots. Your motion. Alvin Osling said to Alvin Zero. Any questions? Roll call, please. Car. Aye. Carr, aye. Pittman. Aye. Pittman, aye. Slattery. Aye. Slattery, aye. Poulos. Aye. Poulos, aye. Frosto. Aye. Frosto, aye. Bellotto. Aye. Bellotto, aye. Vieta. Aye. Vieta, aye. Holly. Aye. <coughs> Holly, aye. Fairwell. Aye. Fairwell, aye. Osling. Aye. Osling, aye. Ten eyes. Thank you. Next item is a res <coughs> excuse me, a resolution authorizing a letter agreement with the Service State LLC for golf course maintenance services. This provides for a three-year agreement with the service gate. A motion by Alderman Osley. A second by Alderman Carr. Any questions? Roll call. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Pittman. Aye. Pittman, aye. Slattery. Aye. Slattery, aye. Poulos. Aye. Poulos, aye. Frosto. Aye. Frosto, aye. Bellotto. Aye. Bellotto, aye. Vieta. Aye. Vieta, aye. Holly. Aye. Holly, aye. Fairwell. Aye. Fairwell, aye. Osling. Aye. Osling, aye. Ten eyes, Thank you. And the last item is a resolution authorizing an agreement with Employee Benefits Corporation for services for the city to comply with the Consolidated <coughs> Omnibus Re Reconciliation Act of 1985. Essentially what this does is put in place a program through this company <coughs> to issue notifications to employees, what employees, what our former employees, when necessary, and that are required pursuant to the COBRA statute. We have a motion. Alvin Gero, second Alvin Pollock. Any questions? Roll call. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Pittman. Aye. Pittman, aye. Slattery. Aye. Slattery, aye. Poulos. Aye. Poulos, aye. Frosto. Aye. Frosto, aye. Bellotto. Aye. Bellotto, aye. Vieta. Aye. Vieta, aye. Holly. Aye. 
Holly, hi. Fernwell. Hi. Fernwell, hi. Osley. Hi. Osley, hi. Thank you. Anything else, Council? No, members of the Council, we did provide you with a memo explaining the nature of the hearing that is taking place presently so that you have a full and complete understanding of uh, what the city is doing and how it is going forward. That is the liquor hearing. Thank you. Any committee reports can be developed today? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, we uh, had a meeting on Thursday, March 1st. The meeting was called to order at 7 p.m. <coughs> President were Alderman Hawley, Bellotto, Frosto, Osling, and Thompson. Absent were Alderman Rita and Johnson. Also present were Mark Miller and Director Mike Marzell. There was no public comment. Uh, we had two liquor licenses re to review. One was for Durango Restaurant. A majority of their income is derived from food, and this will help them compete with other restaurants in the area. It was moved by Alderman Osling and second by Alderman Frosto to recommend issuing a liquor license. All were in favor, motion passed. PL and DIN, the former uh, Gala's uh, bar down in Old Western, uh, was requesting a transfer of their liquor license currently held by the bar at that location. Alderman Frosto noted that the hours began at 6 a.m. He would like to see them begin at 11 a.m. It was explained they wanted to show rugby games and other special events happening in Ireland from time to time. Um, Alderman Frosto would like to recommend an 11 a.m. open time and to notify the mayor's office for earlier start times. He made that a motion. It was second by Alderman Bellato's motion passed. Um, we uh, reviewed the Thornton's Bluestone development request to clean up the pins on the property at 2330 uh, 127th Street, uh, making it two pins. Uh, one is for the gas station and one is for the other property. That, uh, that will make it easier for them to sell or lease and clean up this area, the pins in this area. It was moved by Alderman Bellato and second by Alderman Oslin to pass this to the City Council. All were in favor, motion passed. Under sign reviews, a sign was presented by Midway Storage. Uh, it did not comply with the sign code as presented. Alderman Bellotta moved and Alderman Thompson seconded to deny and then work on a sign design that complies. All were in favor of motion to deny passed. Blue Sky, uh, the formal, uh, former Brenna Bottle, presented a sign um, that included uh, removing just the outside part of the existing sign and replacing it with a non-compliant sign. After discussion, it was decided to ask them to bring the sign into compliance with the sign code. Motion was made by Alderman Osling and seconded by Alderman Thompson to deny the sign as presented. All were in favor of motion to deny pass. Director Marzell reported that we are switching over to a new 911 rave system, which is included with our 911 package with Orland Park. The other system, code red, will be discontinued. Uh, numbers will be ported over. You can uh, find out how to sign up for that if you haven't signed up already. You can sign up, uh, find out how to sign up for that on the uh, city's website at blueisland.org. That will help you keep uh, abreast of what's going on in town, special events, any kind of dang uh, dangerous situations or bad weather or other concerns. So please sign up for that. Um, under Alderman concerns, questions were asked about Love on the Blue, what's happening with them. Their main hours are breakfast and lunch from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., but occasionally they have special events. There have been some complaints about some parking issues. It was moved by Alderman Bellotto and seconded by Alderman Thompson to adjourn. All were in favor. Meeting was adjourned at 7.36 p.m. The next meeting is scheduled for Thursday, May 3rd at 7 p.m. in City Council Chambers. Thank you very much. Finance Committee. Finance meeting called to order on April 17th at 7.05. Members present, Alderman Farrenwald, Alderman Vieira, Alderman Frosto, Alderman Townsend, Alderman Holly, and Alderman Oslin. Also present, Mike Marzell, Director of Finance and Administration, Lori Brown, Deputy Chief of Finance, Ted Ruthenberg, Clay Putnam, ServiceScape, and Nick Carnavas, GR Real Estate, and Bob Mantha. There was no public comment. Um, at this time, I would like to um, ask Director Mike Marzell to come to the podium to present the accounts payable. Yes, uh, in your packet included the accounts payable uh, totaling $851,052.61. Due to the cancellation of the uh, previous Tuesday's council meeting, uh, the accounts payable system was not able to generate the accounts payable list 
in a timely fashion to get it to the Finance Committee. So the accounts payable as presented this evening has not been reviewed by the Finance Committee. It was a consensus of the Finance Committee to forward the accounts payable without their review to City Council for review and approval. Staff is prepared to answer any questions that you may have on um, the accounts payable. Any questions? Go ahead. Okay, so I'd like to make a motion for the approval of the accounts payable for April 25th in the amount of 851000 $52.69. Oh, a motion to have a second by Alderman Pauly. Any questions? Roll call, please. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Pittman. Aye. Pittman, aye. Slattery. Aye. Slattery, aye. Poulos. Aye. Poulos, aye. Frausto. Aye. Frausto, aye. Bellato. Aye. Bellato, aye. Vieta. Aye. Vieta, aye. Pauly. Aye. Pauly, aye. Farrell. Aye. Farrell, aye. Osley. Aye. Osley, aye. aye. Ten eyes. Um, a motion, um, finance approved and reviewed the um, payroll, and I'd like to make a motion uh, to City Council to approve the payroll for April 6th in the amount of $332,056.77. We have a motion to second by Alderman Farrell. Any questions? Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Pittman. Aye. Pittman, aye. Slattery. Aye. Slattery, aye. Poulos. Aye. Pulos, aye. Frausto. Aye. Frausto, aye. Bellato. Aye. Bellato, aye. Vieta. Aye. Vieta, aye. Colley. Aye. Colley, aye. aye. Farewell. Aye. Farewell, aye. Hustling. Aye. Hustling, aye. Ten eyes, Thank you. Okay, I also want to make a motion to enter into an agreement with Lochnear to inspect the Division Street Bridge. Your motion. Well, I'll be here. Second, I'll be here. Any questions? Roll call, please. Carr. Aye. Carr, aye. Pittman. Aye. Pittman, aye. Slattery. Aye. Slattery, aye. Poulos. Aye. Poulos, aye. Frasco. Frasco, aye. Bellato. Aye. Bellato, aye. Vieta. Aye. Vieta, aye. Holly. Aye. Holly, aye. Farrenwald. Aye. Farrenwald, aye. 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 Thank you. Um, I have a request for approval of payment for Thornton's. 2017 tax rebate. This is only sales tax on the property, which comes from the business district. Motion carried from finance. I make a motion to city council to approve. Motion. Is there a second by Alderman Farrell? <coughs> questions? Roll call. Carr. Aye. Carr. Aye. Pittman. Aye. Pittman. Aye. Slattery. Aye. Slattery. Aye. Poulos. Aye. Poulos. Aye. Frosto. Aye. Frosto. Aye. Bellato. Bellato, aye, Vieta. Aye. Vieta, aye, Holly. Aye. Holly, aye, Farewell. Aye. Farewell, aye, Hustling. Aye. Hustling, aye, ten eyes, Thank you. No further business. A motion to adjourn at 8.15. Our next meeting is May 1st, 2018, 7 p.m. in the East Annex. Thank you very much. Public Health and Safety Committee. Yes, Your Honor, I have the meetings from the, or the minutes from the meeting of March 13th. Present for Chief LaSalle King, Deputy Chief Bernie Arzab, Chief Dan Rita, Alderman Ken Pittman, Alderman George Poulos, Alderman Kevin Donahue, Alderman Dexter Johnson, and myself. Also in attendance were Mark Mast from Damasty Catering, Dave Brown from Rock Island Public House, Mike Marzell, Alderman Jan Osling, and Alderman Letty Vieira. The meeting was called to order at 6 p.m. Um, Mike Marzell did a presentation on the places of eating tax and explained that this would raise approximately $40,000 in additional revenue. Alderman Poulos asked if this would be on top of the current sales tax and expressed that he felt it would be excessive. Alderman Donahue went on record as being against the tax, as did Alderman Pittman. Alderman Johnson spoke in favor of the tax and said we must pursue other areas of revenue. Alderman Carr asked if this additional money would be earmarked for special projects. Mr. Marzell indicated that it would go into the general fund to support city services. Mark Mass spoke against the tax, saying that this would severely impact his catering business. Dave Brown spoke against the tax, saying that his operating margin is too small for him to absorb the tax, and mentioned that he has not seen any benefit from the additional 1% sales tax that was instituted previously. Alderman Carr explained that much of the 1% sales tax is being held in reserve for upcoming business district projects. 
Dave Brown suggested that the budget shortfall be filled in by the salaries of city personnel positions that have been eliminated. Under the fire department report, there were 225 EMS responses, 65 fire responses, 7 auto aid responses, and 11 mutual aid responses. They collected $44,315.61 for the month of February. Fire recovery received was $1,824. <coughs> Under general information, the union negotiations are ongoing. Under fire prevention, inspectors spent the month conducting annual inspections and plan reviews. A schedule was put together for fire prevention staff and shared with the building department in an ongoing attempt to improve communications between the two departments. The compliance engine program has been working and they are able to reach out to more businesses in town. Um, under the ambulance fee increase, Chief Rita recommended ambulance fees for non-resident billing be increased from $1,000 to $1,100 and our resident billing be increased from $800 to $850 and the mileage from $10 a mile to $16 a mile. Projected increase in revenue would be $39,666. Alderman Poulos made note that many of the surrounding towns had much lower rates. Alderman Johnson suggested that the bulk of the increase be shifted to non-residents. Alderman Carr asked what the average charge for the surrounding area was, which is $981 for non-residents, $819 for residents, and a $14 charge for mileage. Um, the police department, Deputy Chief Cornell stepped down to the civil service rank of sergeant. Corporal Arzab was appointed as interim deputy chief. Sergeant Harlow remains as the administrative sergeant. Officer Nick Babbitt has graduated from DARE training and taught his first class at St. Benedict's School. Under training, Deputy Chief Arzab attended training on internal affairs and professional standards. Corporal Sefasi attended training on use of force. Deputy Chief Arzab, Officer Elton, Officer Strezzo, Officer Babbitt, and Officer Rhodes attended training for AED and CPR. Corporal Sefasi and Officer Strezzo attended training on standardized field sobriety testing, and Officer Stamer attended training related to use of force. Uh, there was a total of 2,227 calls for service in February. And under cases of interest, on February 17th, police officers responded to 2145 West 135th place for a report of a home invasion. As officers arrived, a subject known to law enforcement was observed exiting from the building with superficial facial injuries. The subject reported that he had been the victim of a home invasion and said one offender was known to him. The incident is suspected to have been drug related. Also, officers have taken four firearms off the street since January 1st of 2018. Uh, BEMA did not attend the meeting. There were no aldermen's concerns. The meeting was adjourned at 647. Our next meeting will be May the 8th at 6 o'clock here on these days. Thank you very much. A commission uh, of useful services committee, any report? I ask for a motion to uh, waive a portion of fees and penalties for 13527 Chatham Street. Yes, we have the motion. We have a second by Alderman Carr. Any questions? Okay. Um, Carr. Aye. Carr. Aye. Pittman. No. Pittman. No. Slattery. Aye. Slattery. Aye. Poulos. Aye. Poulos. Aye. Frosto. Aye. Frosto. Aye. Vieta. Vieta, aye. Holly. Aye. Holly, aye. Farrenwell. Aye. Farrenwell, aye. Osling. Aye. Osling, aye. Thank you very much. Anything else? Oh. Thank you. Judiciary Committee? Uh, yes, I have the minutes of the committee uh, meeting of Monday, April 16th in the East Annex. Called the order at 6 p.m. <coughs> Excuse me, present are all under Karen Ball, Pittman, Slattery, Vieira, and Epsilon is all Poulos. Also present were Leslie Kennedy, Olson Sturt. Uh, Michael Lazier, Michael Marzell, Director of Finance Administration, Fred Glau Alderman, Kevin Glau Treasurer, and President Mike Sign. Uh, public comment, Alderman Bolado and Resident Sin both expressed support for an ordinance that would encourage the return of homes to single family status. Alderman Bolado emphasized that at the very least, the provision should be made requiring two entrances for every unit in any multifamily structure. 
He also noted that there was a multifamily building, or that there, are, that there are multifamily buildings being assessed as single family homes, and it should be corrected, and that the building department is not consistent in for multifamily compliance. Uh, still under development are three items. Uh, first is an ordinance restricting, restricting parking on 2500 Block of High Street. The second is an amendment to the administrative adjudication ordinance. And the third is an ordinance for Monday and Friday, no parking at Cooper's Grove. Uh, regarding liquor license categories and fees, uh, Treasurer Bolado requested that licenses uh, better define be better defined per value, dollar value thresholds and type of establishment. He also notes that liquor licenses should be rescinded when a business closes. Uh, regarding the uh, lien process, Director Marzell's target is to have all this through committee by May 31. Uh, there was a discussion of returning the in discussion of returning home to single family status, which was earlier referenced in the uh, citizens' comments. Uh, Attorney Kennedy and Director Marzell are working on this. Uh, the issue of homeless, our homeless population was brought up. Uh, it was acknowledged that this is an important issue involving a complex set of problems, including mental health, property rights, and police priorities, and will be the subject of future review. The, uh, the pending storage container ordinance uh, is expected by Director Marzell to be prepared for review at the committee's next meeting. Under Alderman's concerns, uh, Regarding the review of claims against the city, Attorney Kennedy and Director Marcel will develop guidelines that will allow staff to handle claims that fall under a certain threshold, and accordingly, there was no closed session. There was a motion to adjourn by Alderman Pittman and seconded by Vieira, approved at 6 3 p.m. The next meeting of the Judiciary Committee will be Monday, May 21st, 6 p.m. Thank you much. Any automatic announcements or comments? All the current I just want to uh, congratulate the police department on their crushing victory <laughs> over the fire department in the basketball game. Good job, guys. Sorry, fire department. <laughs> There's always next year. Oh, thank you. I've been very successful for tree planting last Saturday. The mayor was there and many other folks in the room. We appreciate the help. We'll get off to the real start Saturday, May 5th. We still need volunteers. Please sign up to come out and help. We're going to plant about 30 trees that day. Anybody else? Let me just make a comment. Uh, Alderman Dexter Johnson and a whole group of volunteers last Saturday also participated in cleaning up the first ward, painting fire hydrants, picking up garbage, etc. So that was a big success, along with the uh, basketball game with Blue Cap, where the Blue Cap uh, basketball players won against uh, their rivals at the uh, John Dean Beer Rec Center. That was also held Saturday. Um, the Little League uh, parade went fairly well. They had the whole uh, session here in the East Addicts in the morning. They had the parade at noon and it lasted around 12 30. That was a complete success. And again, we also attended the uh, Guns and Hoses basketball game at, at the St. Benedict's uh, gym, a fundraiser for St. Benedict's. Again, a complete success. It was packed. And um, it was fairly one. I mean, you guys did a, little, a hell of a job out there. Um, they gave it their all. Both Chiefs played. Both Chiefs played. <laughs> uh, any other comments? If not, I need a motion to retire to post session for consideration of pending or power litigations affecting the special collective bargaining matters between the city and the Hawaii Health and Professional Firefighter Association. So I need a motion to go in. All in uh, all these, like all in Fairwell. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Let's go. For the students on the chair, I'll sign it off. You know, wait, you come on up right now. So you can sign it. Thank you.